Wow. Here's what we're going to talk about today. The five secrets used by the world's very best companies to embrace constant change and growth. Everything you are going to hear about today is a result of data-driven discovery. During the past 12 years for my books, we have screened more than 220,000 companies. We have built dossiers on more than 45,000 businesses. I have interviewed more than 11,000 CEOs and business owners. During that time, we've generated more than 500,000 pages of interview transcripts, and we wrote the books on speed, productivity, growth, leadership, and reinvention. How many of you are prepared to sit there today and say that you want to be better at what you do? Raise your hands if you'd like to be better at what you do, okay? How many of you would like to be an even better leader than you are right now? Raise your hand if you'd like to be a better leader. And the third question is this. How many of you want to play a vital role in your store or your stores achieving their full economic potential and growing? Raise your hands if you do. I happen to be a Christian, but I love the study of other religions, and I love a statement attributed to Buddha who said, the teacher will come when the student is ready. For you see, if the student's not ready and the teacher shows up, nothing's going to happen. But if the student is ready and the teacher shows up, magic will take place. Leaders who embrace change and growth have a culture based on a noble purpose. When you take what you do and you turn it into a big, noble purpose, here's what happens. It provides everybody the reason for going to work in the morning. The second thing it does is it creates and maintains the momentum. There's no reason to say, go get them, boys and girls. I mean, we've got to sell a lot of stuff today because it's the big, noble purpose that makes it happen. A big, noble purpose gains alignment, keeps everybody on the same page. A big, noble purpose builds a culture and one of the most important things I will tell you today, and if you leave with nothing other than this, but there's a lot more coming, it would be this. The right culture is the only competitive advantage you will ever have in business. Because you see, I don't care what any store or what anyone buys, sells, does, produces, or services. Someday, what I know is this, somebody's going to do it better, faster, cheaper than you. You see, there's only one thing that any business can ever truly, really own, and that is the culture of the organization. You will have a culture, and it's one of two cultures. It is either the culture you want it to have, and you work to have, and you work to celebrate, and you work to make it alive for everybody every day, and if it's not that culture, there is a culture that exists by default, and the culture that exists by default is everybody out for themselves, not given a damn. And everybody gets to have one or the other. Leaders who embrace change and nonstop growth make growth a guiding principle. Let me introduce you to Mike Long, fellow Midwesterner. He's the CEO of Aero Electronics. He's taken this company to a $24 billion company based in Denver, Colorado. They handle all the parts that go into anything electronic in the world. He's a big, big guy, kind of imposing, played football in Ohio. And I mean, you, you kind of look at him and get a little bit scared, but like most big guys like that, he's a, he's a pussycat. He's a sweetheart. And so I'm sitting down with him for endless days, interviewing him for my book, The Reinventors, and I finally looked at him one day and I said, Mike, I got a question. I said, all you ever talk about is growth, 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 growth. Building new businesses, finding new businesses, buying new businesses, inventing new businesses, growth, 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 growth. I said, aren't you ever going to slow down? He said, I can't afford to slow down. I said, why? Is your shareholder or owner that greedy? And he said, what are you talking about? He said, companies that act first and foremost out of the interest of the shareholder or the owner makes stupid decisions. Those are the people that shut down facilities and lay off people. He said, they're bad for everybody. He said, the reason you grow is for your people. He said, Jason, I got 30,000 people here. And what I can tell you is this, every one of them wants to make more money. There's not one among these 30,000 people who will tell you they don't want to make more money, not one. And as I can tell you, that almost all of them 
are going to want a promotion sometime. And he said, Jason, if I can't pay them more money, if I can't give them a promotion, you know what's going to happen? They're going to leave. And if they leave, you know what's going to happen? They are either going to join my competition or they're going to become my new competition. He said, the magic in business is you grow to stay ahead of your people. That's what allows you to find and keep the right people. They're the people who allow you to find and keep and grow the right customer. And then that's how you keep the shareholder or owner happy. Leaders who embrace change and growth let go. The other thing that most organizations and people can't let go of is ego. Ego has nothing to do with feeling good about yourself. Ego is when the boss has to be the smartest person in the room. Now here's what happens. When the boss has to be the smartest person in the room, by the time information reaches the boss, it's been shaped and formed and turned to conform to the boss's view of the world. Winston Churchill, who saved England, saved the United Kingdom. Most people don't know this story. He was responsible for a lot of remarkable things. He had a truth squad of 12 people. And the job of the truth squad was only to tell him the truth. Because he said, look, my field generals and field commanders are going to tell me what they think I want to hear. And he said, I can't afford just to hear that. He said, I have to hear the truth. Wouldn't it have been nice if the leadership of Circuit City had taken to heart when people said, you suck? <laughs> and here's the problem with the law of suckage. I don't know if you know about the law of suckage, but I write about the law of suckage in my book, The Reinventors, and the law of suckage says this, by the time you figure out you suck, you have sucked for a very long time. Leaders who embrace change and nonstop growth make lots of small bets. But here's the big thing we discovered. It's not only about making a commitment to making lots of small bets, but all of these great companies we identified and wrote about have certain rules for small bets, and they're fascinating. Here's the first one. No skunking. Skunking is when somebody who works for you has, a, has what they think is a good idea. You know, I think if we did this, this might actually help the store. I think this would actually be good, really, really good. Yeah, but what if, what if I tell it to him and he thinks it's dumb? I mean, do, do, I don't know, do I get fired? I mean, do I do it or not? Well, so they finally talk to their husband, wife, or partner, and they say, you know, I got this idea that I think would be good, but I'm a, I'm a little fearful of telling the boss. Well, tell them, for God's sake. Man up. I mean, you know, go in and tell them. So one morning you wake up, swallow hard. Today is going to be my day. Uh, boss, listen, there's something I want to talk to you about. I have this idea. You know what skunking is? Skunking can be as little as an eyebrow raised and looking at you the wrong way that dismisses you. Skunking can be, you know, buddy, good stuff, but I mean, we tried that once, that didn't work. Skunking can be, you know, it's kind of busy right now, let's, let's revisit that at another time. Skunking can be, sorry, that's not going to happen on my watch, not while I have the store. That's what skunking is. And how many times does somebody have to be skunked before they say, this is either not the place for me, or obviously my ideas are not welcome here. When you have a commitment to an environment of no skunking, the other thing that happens is this, everybody gets heard. Everybody gets heard. And everybody is invited to share their ideas. If I spent more than 20 or 30 minutes with you, there's one question I would ask you. I think it's the only important question that anybody can ask another person. I'd get as close as I could to you physically without scaring the hell out of you. And I'd look as deep into your eyes as I possibly could without you getting the wrong idea. And I'd say, I got one question for you. Just one. Speak from your heart. Reveal your soul. Why do you do what you do? Because that will tell me everything about you. 
and in asking Bill Gates, in asking Ingvar Kamprad, in asking the Dan D'Amico's of this world, why do you do what you do? They all use different words and they say the exact same thing. And the exact same thing they say is this. Why do I do what I do? Hmm. They say, you know, I guess I have no choice but to do what I do, they say. For you see, they continue, this company has given me more opportunity to grow personally, professionally, and financially than I ever thought possible would happen to me in my life. Why am I here and why do I do what I do? I have to do what I do because I have to make certain that the same opportunity that I had, everyone else here will have who's here today and everyone who will ever be here in the future will have as well. When you do that, that is when truly the extraordinary happens. Travel safe, but I thank you so much. Oh, there's my...